Welcome back to the end-to-end -end walkthrough of how you upgrade from ASP.NET on .NET Framework up to ASP.NET Core on .NET 7. In the previous video, we installed the .NET Upgrade Assistant Visual Studio extension, and I talked about how we can use this to incrementally upgrade web projects, such as our eShop MVC app that we're working on in this series. So let's dive in and create a new project. So here I am in Visual Studio. We've installed the extension previously. So now I'm able to right click on my MVC project and choose upgrade. From here, I say that I'm going to do a side-by-side -side incremental project upgrade. Remember, like we talked about last time, we'll have both the original ASP.NET app and the new ASP.NET Core one existing side-by-side, -side, routing requests from the core app to the original one if the endpoints aren't available there yet. So I choose that. Now we can choose either new project or existing project. If I already had an ASP.NET Core project in my solution that I wanted to use as that new uh, landing place where all of the endpoints are eventually gonna be migrated to, I could do this. In this case, I, I don't. So I'm gonna choose new project. We'll choose next. It recommends a name for the project. I choose a template. Um, ASP.NET Core MVC seems, seems good. I'll go to next. Now I get to choose which target framework I'm going to use. I can use either the long-term support, .NET 6, the um, standard term support uh, or short-term support, .NET 7. Um, this is the current release. Or I can use the uh, first previews of, of .NET 8. Um, typically, the, the advice I give, and we've talked about this in other videos, is that you would use long-term support unless there was a feature or optimization in the current release that you really needed. Um, so my default's kind of .NET 6. In this case though, these videos are about highlighting how we migrate to .NET 7. And so we're, we're gonna go ahead with that. That's a great option as well. There's really not that much difference in how long they're supported at this point. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click next. We get a little summary of the sorts of changes that are going to happen. We click finish and the tooling will now create a new ASP.NET Core project that will be where we're going to migrate all of our endpoints to. It's also gonna set up that YARP proxy and install the system web adapters. You can see all of those steps listed here. Okay, that's done. So I'll say done. And now we see a few things. First, we get this summary of how many of our endpoints have been migrated. We see there are 20 endpoints in my app uh, they are all currently on .NET Framework. None are on .NET Core. None are on .NET 7 yet. From here, we could choose to start upgrading them. We can also go to Endpoints Explorer to see which are available on which of the projects. And we have some, some tooling here as well that allows either uh, migrating uh, pieces of our, our project or just removing this if we want to go back to uh, just running on ASP.NET. We also have this new project over here, this eShop Legacy MVC Core project. And if we take a look at it, you can see it's a very typical ASP.NET Core project uh, using uh, top-level statements here. If we look at the CS proj, it's, of course, using the web SDK targeting .NET 7 as requested. We are adding a couple um, NuGet package references. So first, we've got the YARP reference, because remember, the tooling set up that reverse proxy between this app and our original one. We also have the system web adapters, which includes both some... Uh, adapters and some shims so that we can use common system.web APIs in this project. So when we copy code over, it's going to just work. It also adds some new functionality that we're going to talk about in later videos that allow us to get some cool new features such as sharing authentication decisions or sharing session state between our two different projects here. So we'll talk more about this later on. If we come back to the program.cs, again, it's very typical. Uh, it's just kind of an empty ASP.NET Core app with MVC controllers registered. The one thing that's different is that you can see we've uh, registered those system web adapters in our DI container. We've also set up uh, services for the reverse proxy, and we've added the reverse proxy to our middleware pipeline. If we look in appsettings.json, we do have some configuration here for that YARP proxy. Um, inside destinations is where the uh, address would go for the um, uh, original ASP.NET app that we're going to fall back to if an endpoint isn't available here. This will automatically get uh, uh, populated for us when we either launch or deploy the app. So this is all handled automatically. So at this point, I could launch this application and we would have both the ASP.NET Core 
and the ASP.NET app running side by side. And it would look to the user like it was just one app, but nothing would really look different yet because there are no endpoints in this core app. So what would happen is every request would go via the Yarp proxy to the original ASP.NET app and the experience wouldn't be any different. So just to demonstrate how this works, let me add a controllers folder here. Oops. And I'm going to add a, a trivial controller. I'm going to add a controller. Um, go ahead and click add. Uh, we will call it ASP Net Core Controller. This is just temporary. We're going to remove this in future videos. But just as a way of demonstrating that both apps are in fact running, let's just create a trivial controller that returns 200 with the content Hello World from ASP.NET Core. And this will um, be in our ASP Net Core Controller. Now at this point, let's go ahead and launch this solution. And you'll see what I mean about both projects launching. So I'm going to give it a minute to build and to start up. And you can actually see here console output from an ASP.NET Core app. You also see here uh, some logging that says that the Yarp reverse proxy is configured and is proxying to uh, this URL. So now if I bring this um, edge window over here that, that got opened up, We'll give it a minute to finish warming up the app and starting up. And what we're going to see by default when we uh, go to, oh, we got a break point we hit. We're going to keep going. Uh, what we're going to see is that our, our app looks the same as always. This is our um, usual eShop app because, of course, when we go to this default endpoint, there is no default endpoint. Uh, in our ASP.NET Core app yet. So that request got forwarded to our original ASP.NET app and it shows up here, same as always. So this is not changed at all. We've got our sort of diagnostic information down here. We've got our eShop items from the catalog. But now let's suppose that instead I'm going to go to ASP.NET Core Controller. Oh, something didn't work there. Uh, let's figure out what. Oh, right, of course, I don't need controller. That's not part of the route. Um, there we go. Okay, so if we go to localhost 7093 ASP.NET Core, we get this, which was served by the ASP.NET Core app. But if we go here, we get this page, which is served by the ASP.NET app. So you can see that we can have what appears to the user as one web solution, but different parts of the application can be served by ASP.NET Core if they're available there, or by the original ASP.NET app if they're not. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're gonna dive in, we're gonna grab our uh, catalog controller, which is the primary controller, and we're gonna right click, we're gonna say upgrade controller, and we're actually gonna move this controller over to the new ASP.NET Core app. So now when the users go to the, the site, if they're hitting the catalog controller, that will be served by ASP.NET Core. If they hit some of these other things, uh, the pick controller, user info, session, that's going to come from ASP.NET. So join me in the next video where we uh, take that step in our upgrade journey. See you then.